Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will talk about the management of secondary amenorrhea and the management depends upon the identification of cause of secondary amenorrhea. Once the underlying cause is detected, the further management is straightforward and menstruation is restored by correction of etiological factors. We have already discussed the causes and diagnosis of secondary amenorrhea, which you can find in the I button in the top right corner of this video. Let us first discuss the management of physiological factors of secondary amenorrhea. First of all, pregnancy. If on clinical history and urine pregnancy test, we find out that the patient is pregnant, then we will provide an appropriate antenatal care to that patient. Second is that of lactation. Some patients present with secondary amenorrhea in the lactation period. We just need to reassure that it provides the contraception in 98% of cases for the period of lactation and that would provide an adequate time to the mother to look after her baby. Third is that of the menopause. Secondary amenorrhea in menopause is also physiological and we just need to reassure the patient. Let us discuss the management of social factors. As, well, as far as the management of social factors like environmental stresses, marathon running, sudden weight changes like weight loss and weight gain and anorexia nervosa are concerned, there is no specific management for these factors. However, the dietary modification and the lifestyle changes can solve the problem to large extent along with the proper patient counseling. Let us discuss the management of pregnancy related conditions which include the Sheehan syndrome and the Asherman syndrome. So how to do the management of Sheehan syndrome? These women undergo successful ovulation with a daily injection of HMG which is a combination of 75 international unit FSH and 75 international unit LH for an average length time of about 10 to 12 days which directly stimulates the follicular genesis to create the mature follicles and oocytes how to do the management of asherman syndrome conventional treatment of asherman syndrome is to break down the intrauterine adhesion with the uterine sound followed by insertion of intrauterine contraceptive device to prevent the further adhesion formation Menstruation is restored with oral contraceptive pills. Next comes the modern technique of management of Asherman syndrome that is to break down the intrauterine adhesion with a cautery under direct vision through hysteroscopy. The patient is then prescribed with oral contraceptive pills. With this approach, the menstruation is restored in up to 98% of the cases and fertility is achieved in up to 70% of those who wish to conceive. Let us discuss the management of gynecological conditions causing secondary amenorrhea. When secondary amenorrhea is due to gynecological conditions like hysterectomy, endometrial ablation and ophorectomy, then we need to do the appropriate patient counseling and reassurance and to do the symptomatic management. How to do a management of the case in which the drugs are responsible for causing the secondary amenorrhea. Those drugs include Danazol, GnRH analogs like Goserlene, oral contraceptive pills, phenothiazine like Prochlorpyrazine, Metoclopramide, Cimetidine, Reserpine, Digoxin, Tricyclic Antidepressants, Pelvic Irradiations. In that case, we will tell the patient to consider stopping these drugs if their intake is not absolutely necessary. Let us discuss the management of androgenizing conditions. Among the androgenizing conditions, we will include the conditions like, first of all, polycystic ovarian disease. And for the management of polycystic ovarian disease, according to RCUG guideline, follow the link given in the I button in the top right corner of this video. Second is that the virilizing ovarian tumor. The virilizing ovarian tumor may require the surgical resection. Third is adrenal tumor that is also best managed by surgical removal. Next comes the congenital adrenal hyperplasia that respond to steroids and the patient can be made fertile with the ovulation induction. Let us discuss the management of medical or surgical conditions like first of all Cushing syndrome. Patient with the Cushing syndrome is best managed by referring to an endocrinologist. Such patient should be fully counseled and reassured that having amenorrhea doesn't bear any serious effect on her general health and the future fertility. 
Second is that of the thyroid disorder. As far as thyroid dysfunction is concerned, the best manage is referral of the patient to endocrinologist who recommend either medical or surgical treatment depending upon the th type of thyroid dysfunction. Let us discuss the management of pituitary tumor that is best managed by either the bromocryptine or by surgery. Let us talk about the management of other conditions causing secondary amenorrhea like first of all the pelvic tuberculosis that is best treated with anti-tuberculous medications. These are used for pulmonary tuberculosis but they are also helpful in the pelvic tuberculosis although fertility outcomes are generally poor. Next come the pseudosciasis. We need to consider emotional support and psychotherapy to help treat pseudosciasis. For lymphocytic adenohypophysitis, the first line of treatment is high-dose corticosteroids. Relapse after tapping or discontinuation is common and its use is limited by the long-term adverse effects. Now, this table describes the whole summary of management of each cause of secondary immunoria. First of all, the physiological causes in which we would include pregnancy. These patients require antenatal care, in lactation and menopause do reassurance. For the social factors, the proper treatment is dietary advice plus lifestyle modification. For Sheehan syndrome, injection at MD. For Asherman syndrome, breakdown adherence followed by combined oral contraceptive pills. For gynecological conditions and for the drugs, we need the reassurance and counseling. For polycystic ovarian disease, we need to do management according to RCG guideline about polycystic ovarian disease. Virilizing ovarian tumor and adrenal tumor may need the surgical resection. In congenital adrenal hyperplasia, we need to consider steroid plus ovulation induction. Cushing syndrome requires steroid plus ovulation induction. Thyroid disorder requires medical or surgical management depending upon the type of thyroid disorder. In pituitary tumor, bromocryptine and surgical management are helpful. For endometrial tuberculosis, consider anti-TB drugs. Pseudocytosis need counseling and lymphocytic adenohypophysitis require treatment with glucocorticoids. And I would like to complete my presentation with this quote. Positivity, confidence and persistence are the keys in life. So never give up on yourself. Always be positive in every aspect of your life. Forget the mistake but learn the lesson. Thank you so much. Wishing you all the best. Allah Hafiz.